I made it down the uh, M11 um, through Ape Peninsula, through whatever it is, road, lots of speed dumps, stuff like that. In one piece, I'm actually at Jimmy Rum's distillery now. We're going to go in, we're going to meet Jim himself, ask the difficult questions that you know I always ask, like, um, what are we doing here? And what day is it? So we're going to go in, we're going to bust this interview. This is the um, extremely high tech, uh, auto completely automated um, bottling run of um, Jimmy Rum. This is how it's done, people. Every bottle is personally cared for by the people themselves. Thank you. To finish up, the most difficult question of all. The niche seems to have a growing booze industry. I mean, we're three blocks from Bass and Flinders. We've got um, Jetty Road, literally 500 meters down the street, if that. Why? Why do you think? This tends to be into... It's, it's always been a booze industry. We're, Melbourne's only just catching on. Um, I've lost count of how many wineries there are up on the hill from sort of uh, Mount Eliza south. Um, well into the 200s, if not the 300s by now. So uh, we are world renowned as one of the best Pinot producing regions. So even talking to distillers in Boston on my research trip, so I had to put myself through a, a pain and suffering of 70 distilleries in three months to research this project before oh, we started. You poor I darling. No, the, the things I do for my country, is it? it's insane. I mean, you had it to liver mm. Yeah, third one now, so we're doing all right. <laughs> You're on so, your third liver, yeah, it's yeah. going well. Yeah, this one's hanging in there, so. Um, but no, I spoke to Maggie Campbell, who used to run uh, Private Tea Distillery north of Boston, and she was an ex-winemaker, and she knew our region very, very well, um, because we're world recognised. But um look it's i grew up here i looked all over we very nearly ended up in williamstown i even nearly ended up in tasmania um but in the end i just kept coming back to this beautiful region i i love it i'm incredibly community focused wherever we can be so i love to be able to bring two more tourism down here building the beautiful venue that we have to to be one of the centerpieces of melbourne to come and visit so um, that's why i like being down here but why is everybody else well? It's just a, a nice place to hang out. This Dramana Habitat we have here, which is, yes, seven different booze manufacturers in this estate, but there's also another probably what are it, 13 or 15 um, artisanal manufacturers, everything from candle makers to cheese makers. Uh, the only thing we're missing is a boot maker, actually. Denim jeans, coffee roasters. Um, there's indoor plant. I'm not gonna say manufacturer, producer. Um, mm -hmm. There is an amazing, amazing amount of stuff in this little estate. So, um, yeah, and when you start, things just grow. So we've been ticking along quite nicely. I must admit, I, we showed up on the other night, it's a date night, to um, check out the vibe of the joint. Never have been here before. And what you you guys may see in the um, company in photographs is nine tenths of what is served in this distillery is actually Victorian. In fact, I can see Chief Sun, I can see mm -hmm. my friend Nick in view, um, I can see hemp distillery from out in Gippsland, and you've got four pillars, but Chief Sun, so... Um, I... It's, it's, it is definitely one of those things. I mean, uh, we are a rum distillery first and foremost, and you can see from the other shelf there, it's all rum. Yes. Um, but that's friends and family sort of thing in that shelf there. We like to support so Bass and Flinders, we run their Balcom Gin, um, we, Yak, Yak Creek. Yak Creek, yes, well, I had to get Yak Creek because he, three years ago, he won the best rum in the country. So, Rankin, congratulations to the lads up there and uh, congratulations to Bottle of Wild with Wood. Um, You've got to try their lemon myrtle gin. Lemon myrtle? We made a nimble party, which is yeah. Indian cocktail, using their lemon myrtle gin. And there is an event horizon forms in my house mm. because I make up these cocktails, I give them to Selena, and they're gone. They just slip over the event horizon, never to be seen again. Mm. It's just amazing. There's this empty glass appears almost mm. instantly. Yeah. So yeah, you got to try the lemon myrtle yeah. bit. No, I, I haven't been up through there. Unfortunately, once I got started, I haven't had a lot of chance to do too much travelling anymore. So, but uh, yeah, no, there's there's a lot of uh, a lot of local distilleries. We try and cover everything. We try and we're all local beers and local wines. Um, so we, we try and support as much local. Our, our venue, I set it up as a, as a bar. So we've got to get, uh, with rum, our hardest thing and our most rewarding thing is educating people about rum. Mm. So 
is showing people that it is not the cheap nasty spirit you just drink until you pass out in the gutter. It is actually as our rum rum, I will put it next to any single malt whiskey or brandy or cognac, fine cognac in the world. And that is so anti what this country thinks rum is. Yeah, I must admit. Um, I actually have done a review of Underbear's rum and because it's punching syrup in Mackay. Mm. You know, they tip mm. a couple of Bundys and Coke in them and then it's the IQ goes out the door and they beat each other half to death. And so I said to Selena, look, got a small bottle of Bundy and said, okay, try it. And neat. And she went, oh God, this tastes absolutely disgusting. I went, okay, we generally drink it with Coke. So we measure it with Coke and got, oh, okay. Now it tastes absolutely disgusting, but it's got Coca-Cola. Mm. So, <laughs> Educate, when the benchmark in this country is Bundaberg rum, and someone said to me the other day that Bundaberg rum currently is 50% sugar in addition to the alcohol. So about 12.8 is the what I'm hearing. Yeah. Percent sugar, I've never actually got out and measured it, I can, but I haven't. But uh, it's about 12.8% sugar and Coke is 12.6% sugar. So when you when rum gets classed as, uh, if you can't fight on Bundy, you can't fight sort of thing, when it gets classed, it's actually nothing to do with the rum everything to do with the huge volumes of sugar you've got a whole heap of bogans and jackaroos running around on red cordial and all that amount of energy that it has to be expelled somehow some people handle it others do not uh, i've had friends that get punch punchy on vodka and so uh vodka and lemonade he was really? a big boy yeah if he starts drinking vodka and lemonade i left the pub i wasn't interested in playing that game so <laughs> but he, he kept drinking it because he loved it and it's like mm, don't understand but uh, but no, it's and it's sadly uh, worldwide, uh, probably around forty percent of the rums in the world are sugar dosed. So Venezuelans, as a culture, they dose all their rums anyway um, because they do like a sweeter rum. Um, all your spices are reading up to fifteen percent sugar. Some of them, I reckon, are so full of sugar you can almost stand a spoon up in it. They're just like a syrup rather than a rum. So it's uh, an invitation to type two. Oh, most definitely, and this is why you read also read a lot of diet books and stuff, they say stay away from rum. Our, to give you a bit of an idea, our silver, straight off the still, uh, runs two more calories than vodka. And vodka is very lean in calories. Those two calories are simply the flavour. So it's not flavours without it, it's just the, the actual congeners and the esters and the profile of the spirit. So, because you're a perfectionist and you use real spices, not um, syrups, and like, so when you add Mm. Um, like cinnamon to your rum, you're actually dropping cinnamon stick in. Through, it, yes, yes, presently. Yeah. So we do, we actually boil up a cinnamon syrup at the moment. Our apple that also goes into our spice is local mock Red Hill Granny Smith apple stick in the spirit. Our Pinot, which is a, it's a pretty big seller, we use Critted and Estate grapes around the corner. So one of the oldest wineries on the, on the peninsula. And um, we simply steep our spirits in it. Like that. Other times, like we do use some natural essences for spice as well, for things like lime, because a natural lime will, a juice will not, is not stable enough. So you, you just simply cannot do it with a fresh ingredient. You have to do it with a natural essence. So, that makes a lot but of sense. Uh, yeah, and things like our cans and bits and pieces we use as fresh where we can, and that's, that's why we have a little bit of difference between each batch too. Uh, every year we get a different batch of Granny Smith or different batches of Pinot, so mm -hmm. every batch is slightly different. That makes a lot of sense and it also adds interest to what you're producing because if like this year we've had a lot of rain, we've had the wetter summer, so your Granny Smiths are going to be perhaps a bit sweeter than what they were last they year when we had a really yep. dry one Yep. and it's going to produce it. So you'll actually be able to do what Cameron does is put aside bottles from each year so you can actually sit, sit them over and then age them and then pop them in 20 years time and you'll be able to go, okay, this is the um, you know, 2014 batch and this is that was when we had the really bad bushfires and here's the 2026 batch mm. where we basically swam around the front yard for, the, for six months yeah and i mean even like last year the last two years the Fort Pinot region down here has struggled so the two years ago they got hit by two sail storms in november that knocked all the fruit off the vines conditions were perfect but all the fruit had been bashed off the vines um, so they ended up with we ended up with that year the 2022 batch was incredibly sweet because the vine has had all this energy, so it's just poured it whatever fruit it had left. So it had these beautiful, succulent, sweet grapes. Last year, uh, weather conditions were terrible. So the yield, like we uh, we spoke to one vineyard that wouldn't even, won't be doing Pinot. Could not do Pinot because they could not get enough grapes. 
off there and a big vineyard so it just wasn't viable for them to even do Pinot last year. So my local credit and estate, I had to beg and grovel and fight to get some grapes out of him. Uh, he originally wasn't going to give it, give me any, but uh, Rollo was lovely, and uh, he just didn't want to see a great man cry. So he, he managed to give me some grapes, and we had quite a, a short batch. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Okay. okay. That seems to be basically. I think I've asked all the difficult questions. Um, for those of you who are fortunate to live in Melbourne, you've got to get your asses down here. This, we rocked up, my wife and I, on a Saturday afternoon. It was pumping. There were kids running around the playground. The staff were absolutely flat out. The food was delicious. Can't speak highly enough. And you might bump into the James himself. And this is the venue to go. You want to build a tourist attraction? We've got to make this man a happy man because he's already had to cry to get grapes. We know that much. <laughs> we can't go getting him. Um, Crying, um, any other reason? So, people, my people, this is the place to go. It's um, this most southerly mainland rum distillery that I can say of. So it's pretty unique. It's pretty special. It's about 500 meters off the M11, Draman Rex of the course. And uh, there I say, once you finish trying the world's best rums, you go about 500 meters, and you can go and hit Bassett Flinders, who starts out as a um, brandy distillery. Holly needed um, something to generate income while the brandy aged, and she went, screw it, we can use gin. Yes, exactly. So, and now being more renowned for the gin, but their heart and their soul is, is fine brandies. Yes. So. so, this has been From the Still. This is my friend James. Lovely. Thank you for your time, James. No problem, thank you. And we'll catch you people around. Thank you all. Drink more rum. <laughs>